What's up guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video here on the channel. In this video I'm going to talk about Nadezhda Guzva, a young Russian woman who had a troubled life from a very early age, and when she got older, she got involved in an even more troubled relationship, which ended up culminating in her tragic end. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do, and don't forget to turn on the notifications. Now without further ado, let's go to the video. Nadezhda Guzva had a very difficult life since she was a very little girl. Shortly after her birth, she was left in an orphanage and was only adopted when she was five years old by a couple. The couple who adopted her became very attached to her and always tried to get closer to her by acting as if they were the girl's real parents. However, something very bad would have happened to Nadezhda in her first five years of life, something that left her traumatized and made her become a cold, disobedient girl who preferred to be alone than in the presence of other people. I didn't find information on what exactly would have happened to her, but I think that just the fact that she was left in an orphanage is something quite impactful. As much as her adoptive parents did everything to try to get closer and thus become a family, Nadezhda didn't open up and as she grew up the relationship became more and more difficult. The girl was even taken to psychologists and psychiatrists, and although it was discovered that she had some mental problems that began to be treated, things have not changed much. At about 12 years old, Nadezhda started to steal some belongings from her parents, friends and relatives. She didn't do this for profit, but because she had a compulsion to subtract objects from other people due to the mental problems she had. After the age 14, Nadezhda began to run away from home and live with friends, shelters and even on the street. She preferred that to having to live with her adoptive parents, who at that point had kind of given up on having a good relationship with her. Only her mother, who from time to time still tried to get closer. Because she lived in Nizhny Novgorod in Russia, some of the time she ran away it was very cold, so when she couldn't find a warm place to stay, she would return home and hide in the garage so that her adoptive parents would not notice that she was at home. As soon as she graduated from high school, Nadezhda decided to leave her adoptive parents' home once and for all. She also decided to cut off all contact with them. At that time, she started to live in the house of a couple of friends, who helped her by providing support and shelter until she was able to restructure and turn around on her own. Shortly afterwards, Nadezhda started a relationship with a boy whose name I couldn't find. But what is known is that the young woman ended up getting pregnant and even before giving birth to her daughter, a girl named Nastya, she ended the relationship with this guy. In her early 20s, Nadezhda met a man named Yuri Chikanovsky, who was 32 at the time. Some sources said that they met at a party, others said that they would have met through social media, but close friends would have informed that they met through a dating app. Yuri was a married man with two children already, but that didn't stop him from getting involved with Nadezhda. It is not very clear whether or not the young woman knew from the beginning that Yuri already had a family. The relationship between them was very troubled. Close friends of the couple stated that they fought almost every day, but even so, Nadezhda would be very much in love with Yuri and wanted to become his wife. At the same time, the young woman had problems with her documents and for this reason she was reportedly fired from her job and couldn't find another one because her documents were not in order. To resolve this, she would have to go to her adoptive parents' house and ask for their help, but as she no longer wanted contact with them, she decided not to go. Because she wasn't working and was always seen with Yuri out and about, people who knew the man and knew he was married started saying he was supporting Nadezhda. Some people even guessed their young woman was a cold girl, implying that Yuri bankrolled her in exchange for pleasure. But the fact is that Yuri didn't support Nadezhda as these people thought. An uncle of the young woman named Sasha was the one who was giving her financial support since she became unemployed. This uncle of hers was the only person in the family she still kept in touch with and the only one with whom she had any kind of affinity. For Sasha, since Nadezhda was little, 
He saw her as a daughter and always helped her when she needed it. During almost one year of relationship between Nadezhda and Yuri, they would have separated and got back together several times. Some of her friends advised her to break up with him for good, as clearly they were never going to work out, but Nadezhda ignored their advice. On July 11, 2020, Nadezhda and Yuri were fighting and separated. But even so, Yuri called her and asked her to meet him at Belshazsky Agrivi, a large forest reserve that has little movement of people. Nadezhda agreed to meet him and went to the agreed place. Already on the spot, the two would have intimate relations, and in the middle of that, Yuri would have asked to tie the hands and feet of the young woman, saying that this would spice up the mood even more. Nadezhda agreed, but after that they started to argue and the young woman threatened to tell everything about them to Yuri's wife and the other family members. Yuri would have been furious with that and ended up going on top of Nadezhda, who, as her hands and feet were tied, had no chance of defense. After having attacked the young woman, Yuri took a roll of adhesive tape that was in his car and rolled them all over the victim's head so that she couldn't breathe. And as if that wasn't enough, he still suffocated her with his hands so that it would be all over faster. With Nadezhda already lifeless, Yuri took her and threw her into a pond located in the forest reserve that they were, fleeing soon afterwards. A few minutes later, he called a friend who knew about the extramarital affair with Nadezhda and told him about what he had just done, asking him to help him get rid of the evidence. The friend of Yuri's agreed to help him and together they burned several of Nadezhda's belongings that were with Yuri in order to get rid of evidence. On July 13th, the police received an anonymous call informing that a body would be inside the lake of the forest reserve. The person also informed the name and age of the victim. The Nizhny Novgorod police quickly went to the forest reserve, and after a few hours of searching, they located the body at the bottom of the lake. Still with the hands and feet tied, and with the tape wrapped all over the face. During the autopsy performed on the body, the coroner in charge found that the cause of death was due to suffocation. Later, authorities confirmed that indeed the body belonged to 21-year-old Nadezhda Guzva. However, they had no contact with any close relatives or anyone they could contact to report what had happened. Furthermore, there was no record of her missing either as no one close to her realized that she was missing. That's because, according to some sources, Nadezhda used to stay away for a few days without giving any news, and as she no longer had contact with her adoptive parents, no one had noticed her disappearance. I didn't find information on who Nadezhda's daughter stayed with during this entire period, but it's likely that she stayed with close friends of the victim. As the authorities had no contact with anyone close to the young woman, to let them know what had happened to her, they decided to turn to the media, where they disclosed all the information they had about her and asked anyone who recognized her to appear at a police station. With that, friends close to Nadezhda saw the reports and went to the police station. There, they provided information about the young woman's adoptive parents and also told them about Yudi Chekanovsky, the man with whom she was having a relationship. Through this information, the police decided to call Yuri to give a statement, and even before the police started asking questions, the man confessed to the whole crime. He also reported that the anonymous call was made by himself, as he was remorseful of what he had done and decided to report the whereabouts of Nadezhda's body. Later, authorities confirmed that the anonymous call actually came from Yuri's cell phone, and it doesn't stop there. During the time that Yuri was in police custody, the officers discovered that he was responsible for other serious crimes. In October 2009, he was accused of forcing intimate relations with a 12-year-old girl. At the time, the girl informed the police that she was returning from school when Yuri appeared out of nowhere and pulled her by the arm, taking her to an abandoned house where he committed the act. Four years later, in October 2013, he committed another crime. This time, he set up a date with a 16-year-old offering her a job as a coffee shop attendant. When the girl arrived at the agreed place, Yuri pointed a gun at her and under strong threat took her to a remote forest. In that forest, Yuri tried to force intimate relations with her, but luckily the girl managed to break free before the act 
and even managed to take Yuri's gun. At that moment, the girl realized that the weapon was not actually a firearm, but a pellet gun that was loaded. Even so, the girl was not intimidated and aimed at Yuri's intimate parts that were exposed at the moment. She fired and hit his groin, which was enough for him to fall to the ground in pain, and she managed to flee the scene. The girl went to the police station and reported the man. When the cops went after him and questioned him about these accusations, Yuri confessed to everything and gave all the details. But astonishingly, he was released on the same day by the police so that he could respond to the lawsuit in freedom. As the police claimed that since he had not even managed to undress the victim and that nothing actually happened, he could not be arrested, even though he confessed everything and revealed all his intentions. At that time, the 16-year-old victim, as I already mentioned, had just lost her parents in an accident, and because of that, there was no adult legally responsible for her yet, since the custody process was still in progress. As a result, she had no help in dealing with the situation, and also could never complain to the prosecution about the decision of the police officers at the time. However, about a year later, the police officers responsible for releasing Yuri, even though he confessed to the crime, were exonerated. At the same time, the crimes that Yuri had committed began to be reviewed, but even so, he was never arrested. After his arrest for the crimes against Nadezhda in 2020, his previous crimes were again reviewed and this time, all charges referring to them were added in the case against Yuri. In July 2001, Yuri was put on trial for the crimes against Nadishta Guzeva and for the two counts of forced relations. In the end, Yuri Chikanovsky, who was 35 at the time, was found guilty on all accounts. He received a sentence of only 22 years in prison without the possibility of parole and will be released in 2043, when he will be 57 years old. Nadishta's adoptive parents along with those responsible for Yuri's two previous victims, have joined forces and are seeking a new trial to have his sentence increased. According to them, Yuri is clearly a very dangerous person, and they are sure that when he gets out of prison at the age of 57, he will again claim more victims. Yuri's friend, who helped him burn Nadezhda's belongings in an attempt to get rid of the evidence, was charged with complicity in concealing evidence and sentenced to pay a fine of 40,000 rubles, approximately $500. After the crime, the custody of Nastya, Nadezhda's daughter, was given to the girl's biological father. Alright folks, that's it for today. Thanks for watching until the end, best wishes, and I see you next time.